she was involved in such relationship with another client in the program. Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and this clip comes from another new judge for my channel, Judge David Williams from Kentucky's Monroe Circuit Court. And there are a cut there are two people, a couple of people who just can't keep their hands off each other. And it ends up kind of bad for especially one of them. But I'll let you be the judge. They're two different. Um, they're, they're, they don't come up together. They come up separately. So um, you'll see the woman comes up first and then the man comes up second. So anyway, let me know what you think. Courtney Otterman. Yes. Hey, you can stand right there, ma'am, over here. Um, we'll call you first witness. Oh, right, right. you raise your right hand, you swear the testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I will. State your full name with whom you're employed and what capacity. Full name is Barry T. Cross. I am the program coordinator for uh, Clinton Cumming Moreau. For the ALC, ALC Drug Court. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Cross, as it's part of your duties, have you been filling in and assisting Monroe County since uh, Mr. Lane Cliff? Yes, I have. Okay. And are you familiar with the case involving Commonwealth versus Courtney Alderman? Yes, I have. I've had some few months of supervision, but not the full length of the case. Okay. But I am knowledgeable of the case. Was she terminated from the court on July the 20th, 2023? Yes, that is correct. And can you tell the court why she was terminated? On April 23 of 2021, Ms. Audubon signed the call, it's called Kentucky Special Courts Agreement Appreciation, which is stipulations that they had to comply while they're in the program. On number 13 of this stipulation form, you want me to read it word for word, Your Honor? I don't know how long it is. Tell me just, it's just a few. It's just a few pages, a few, uh, five <laughs> sentences. Is it Jesus Whip or Paul's letters to the Romans? I don't know. It's how, whatever you want. <laughs> anyway, it says, I agree to respect the opinions and feelings of other special court participants and not make verbal or physical threats or abuse towards special court staff or other participants. I also agree not to engage in any romantic or sexual relationships with other special court participants while actively involved in the program. I understand that failure to engage in appropriate behavior may result in a variety of sanctions, including termination. Okay. Did Ms. Oliver sign that agreement? Yes. She enrolled in the program. Yes. And did she violate that program? She, on the 20th of July, Judge uh, Costello and the team did deem that she did violate it and therefore was terminated from the program. What specifically was the violation? She was involved in such relationship with another client in the program. Okay. Now, it also in June, was she, did she have any positive drug tests or positive tests for marijuana? If it's, yes. I don't have the order from me. 6, uh, 626 positive for marijuana, 429 positive for alcohol. Uh, and then, of course, the new violation was number 12, but it's the 13 in the old one that she signed. They didn't have a new form now, but it'd be number 13. In the old school, that she uh, violated appropriate behavior. I have no further questions. Would you like to inquire? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Cross. Move up toward the microphone a little bit, Mr. Cross. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, good. Mr. Cross, prior to that June date, um, that 429 positive was in 2022, correct? Correct. Um, and while she she's been in drug court since 2021. Correct. Okay, uh, what April? Of Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. What phase was she in when she was terminated? She was in aftercare. Okay, and aftercare is the last phase prior to graduation, correct? Correct. Um, and during her time in drug court, um, she has not had any charges, correct? No, no new felony or any misdemeanor charges. She's not been alleged to have absconded from the program, correct? Correct. Okay, I'm going to open the question. you have any redirect? No redirect, Your Honor. It's like calling witnesses. Okay, thank you. Do we need Mr. Cross for anything else or can he be excused? No, I'm, I'm finished with him on this case. We've got a similar case. Okay, well, if you just stand by, we'll call your other case. Go ahead and make your argument. Your Honor, um, 
I understand that Ms. Arterburn has violated a rule of drug court. However, I don't think this rises to the level in which the statute um, KRS 439.3106 contemplates replication being appropriate. Um, I think the court has other things that are available um, in lieu of revocation, such as sanctions. Um, the statute calls that there must be a significant risk to prior victims or the community. I don't think that's been demonstrated in this. Um, additionally, um, the statute accounts for um, what the severity of the violation is, um, including the risk of future behavior or criminal behavior that it could incur and um, what other interventions are available. I think this court does have the ability to sanction Ms. Arterburn, and that would be the appropriate thing to do is she has not been demonstrated um, that she doesn't have the ability to fully comply with supervision, but she did have a violation. Additionally, it's not been demonstrated that she has created a risk to um, any individuals that are alleged victims in this case or the community at large. So I'd ask the court not to revoke her at this time and sanction her instead. Your Honor, this is a novel issue for the Commonwealth. We've not had this come up in my 20 years of practice you know, or prosecution. However, I would say, besides what the statute says, the drug court is, is probably, I believe, the best program we have in the state to help people. And you have to maintain order in that program. And people have to follow the rules. And you just can't decide on your own that you can violate those rules and there not be any repercussions. So. You know, the, the staff did what they had to do because she wouldn't follow the rules. Whether she deserves a sanction or deserves termination, that's up to the court. But there has to be some order maintained. What's the right? Commonwealth's position as far as what would be appropriate? Well, my this understanding case. is I would ask that she be revoked. I think she would be eligible for shock. And I, I was looking at the file, and I can't determine whether this is a, a probation or, or a uh, pretrial diversion that she's on. And so. My file it says a pretrial version of the case. Could you check the file there for a second? Yeah. Well, I think there's ways to handle this case. Well, I'm asking. So I'm asking first. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. Well, that's right. I'm checking my file as well. As we have had, we had thought perhaps her diversion has been previously voided, but she was not entirely sure. And I'll be candid, I did not originate this. Pretrial diversion. Yeah, we have a diversion. Okay. She thought the diversion had previously been voided or revoked. It was. There was an order. Okay, so she was the inner. And I think she was just confused a little bit. What was the problem then? Why were we going to revoke her the first time? Positive tests, methamphetamines, marijuana. Uh, they tried different treatment options and threw it down the drug court option. Well, I'm going to, you know, there, there comes a point where this particular uh, drug court situation was after she'd been given a pretty big break on a pretrial diversion and not revoke at that time. So this is more than the second bite of the apple here uh, for uh, Ms. Arterburn. Uh, in addition to the statutory obligations there, you know, I must take into consideration the effect it has on the entire drug court and the effectiveness of the drug court. We completely will destroy the drug court if we give people a second chance like she was to go to drug court and then she ignores the rules and doesn't comply with the rules. So I'll take into consideration uh, any, any other sorts of things. I really don't know what to do. She ignored the conditions of her trial diversion previously and we the sanction was to let her go to drug court and now she's ignored the drug court. Seems like she's being relatively hard-headed about this sort of thing. Uh, you almost had the thing finished. Almost had the thing finished. So I'm going to revoke a pretrial diversion and I'm going to schedule a sentencing and we'll, we'll take a listen that might be that might be able to uh, help her. So the sentence, the pretrial, the pre-sentence investigation board and sentencing shall be on September the 21st. Okay. Commonwealth versus James Farber. 21 CRs 00122.
Are you James Farber? Yes. Born in 1994. Last four digits, social security number 0603. We're here on a pretrial diversion revocation. What does the Commonwealth have to say? Your Honor, this is also a pretrial diversion. We have a three-year sentence on position. <laughs> Okay, you want to come up and take your first witness? Raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Okay, you may proceed. Mr. Krauss, you stated earlier that you've been assisting in your own County with regards to Brother Is that correct? Yes, I had to cover while Mr. Mink took another job in Warren County. Are you familiar with Mr. Farber's case? Yes, I am. Are you familiar with his violations? Not the early violations, but I am with this current violation that was gone to have been terminated from the program. Okay, and why was Mr. Farber? He was also violation number 13 in inappropriate behavior with sexual intercourse with another client in the program, which deems could be terminated at on the 20th during their staffing and court session. Judge Costello did deem to enforce number 13 and terminate. <laughs> Sure. Prior to this, uh, Mr. Barber had no allegations that he was not in the program, correct? Yeah. Um, no new charges, correct? No. And had just had uh, two positive alcohol tests in this, or in September and October 2020, correct? He was on no issue except number 13. Okay. I have no further questions. I have no further questions. Your Honor, I would just note this is a case where he was um, ordered to go into drug court originally as the term of his diversion in the original plea agreement. Um, I think that once again, statutorily, um, there's been no evidence that he poses a danger to um, alleged victims or the community at large. I think that he statutorily, this is not considered um, a severe violation in which he is impossible it is impossible to supervise him within the community. Um, I do think a sanction is appropriate in this case. Um, and I would ask the court to consider that as I think there are other options in lieu of revocation um, that would align with what the statute calls for. I would have the same arguments, Your Honor, about unhandled order in the drug court. This is a different situation is in that he was not, did not have a second bite at the apple. This was his first infraction. So, uh, and he's on a diversion. If the court wants to sanction him rather than divert, uh, revoking the diversion, the Commonwealth would have no objection. But I think some sanction is is in place, needs to be ordered. Do you sit on the drug court over here? No, Your Honor. When they move the drug court to 8 a.m. on Thursday, and I have such a docket. Yeah. So that's all I can do to get does, someone, does someone sit in your stead? Who's, yes, who does it? Mr. Hunter, Mr. Gordon Anderson. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, not familiar with, I, I, I don't know whether I knew about this clause or not, as far as uh, individuals being intimately involved with each other as being, uh, you know, a condition. I, I, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Um, here's the tag. It's down there. You know, we'll the stuff in the fuse, unplug it, bring it up here. What is the cord for this thing? Here comes my counter. It's about to die. Uh, I understand the purpose for that as far as keeping order or not. Uh, puts me in a very difficult situation as far as. Uh, A rule is a rule, but if you know, I can't order the drug court to sanction him because they have the authority to to determine who stays in the drug court. That that's been given to them. Judge Christie Costello has that court, and I'm the one that does the ultimate sanction to determine what goes on. Uh, I wonder if any warnings were given. Do you know whether? Any warnings were given to these individuals that they should stop this relationship or anything? I believe both individuals had prior knowledge they were involved. And I believe both individuals probably was hinted to cease their relationships. And they knew 
Well, I, every time we do orientation, we go over the stuff. I have no doubt that they signed that, and I have no doubt that they violated it. My question is, is once it became to the attention of the drug court that they violated paragraph 13 or its successor, were they called in in front of the drug court and explained to them that if they continued in, in the relationship, they'd be terminated or did you just terminate? On the day of the 20th of July, she decided to terminate. And that's when it came to the attention of the court that they were involved we in our knowledge. We wouldn't for sure, but at that time, the judge, we had enough information at that time during the briefing and staffing. She, she felt like she had was he present when that went on. Yes. He was there on the 20th when the court went on. Did he make any acknowledgements or was he given the opportunity to change? It was very quiet when the judge uh, gave out the sentence. Termination. Yes. Okay. Do you have anything else? Well, I just think I'm going to take it under advisement. You know, I'm going to take it under advisement on the thing. Uh, you know, really, if you look at it, one of the reasons that I am given by the statute, and that's what I'm going to review, one of the reasons I have to give the findings I have to make in the statute, one of the findings is not to uh, be supportive of what the drug court program is or to fault and make sure that it doesn't do damage to all the other people. You know, you got all these people that you sit in drug court with and you endanger what happens to them, whether the drug court is good or not when you don't know it, just because you couldn't discipline yourself long enough, you know, to wait till it was over. Now your your uh, intimate friend is, is going to jail now. And I don't know whether you are or not. Uh, you made some a uh, very bad choice here. Uh, not that a lot of people have made bad choices. I'm not singling you out to make bad choices, but I'm in a kind of a difficult situation. I'll take it under advisement. I'll issue your opinion on it, okay? Judge, he is also on a diversion. Do we want to set a review date? I can't hear you. He is also on a diversion. Do we want to set a review date for after your opinion for the next court date? depending on what your decision is. Well, it, it, I'm going to enter an order. And in the order, if I revoke his pretrial diversion, then I'll order a pre-sentence investigation report. And he'll be, he would be sentenced on September the 21st. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Stockton, it, it, and I'll give both of y'all an opportunity to, to, to look at the grounds upon which a revocation can be made and what we should do based upon whether or not a violation of a uh, policy of drug court where someone gets kicked out for a relationship is sufficient or not, you know, to, to, to revoke a pretrial diversion. Those are two different issues, really. And in the past, it's always been clear that the, the people who violate them violated some additional law or, or had dirty drug tests or that sort of thing. So I'll take a look at that issue. Yikes. <laughs> I hope it was worth it. Um, you know, the the woman got the worst of it because she had used her get out of jail free card already. So um, she's probably going to go back to jail. At least that's what it sounds like. And you know, I understand there's reasons why you're you shouldn't do that, and there there's very strong reasons for that. So um, anyway. She was almost done. She was almost done. She couldn't wait, I guess. Anyway, I wonder who blabbed. That's what, that's what I want to know. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.